Greetings and welcome to Pop Culture Beasts Halloween Horror Picks, the show where I recommend off the beaten path horror movies for your Halloween movie night. I'm your host, Ryan Stockstead, and today we're going to North Carolina to talk about an infamous regional slasher with a well-deserved cult following. You are about to enter a world of pure terror, a world of shock, a world of nightmares, a world where your only chance is to run and you don't dare look behind you. You are about to experience The Mutilator from OK Productions. The Mutilator, 1984. This movie is a lot of fun. It was originally called Fall Break, which is a great title, but then somebody pointed out that a lot of schools don't have a fall break, or if they do, they just call it Thanksgiving. So the name was changed to The Mutilator to avoid confusion. And you certainly can't be confused by that title. No matter what you call it, the film was the brainchild of Buddy Cooper, who wrote, produced, and directed the thing. He had always wanted to make movies. And when he came into a bit of money in the early 80s, he decided it was time to follow his dream. <laughs> The Mutilator stars Matt Mittler, Ruth Martinez, Connie Rogers, Bill Hitchcock, Maury Lampley, Francis Raines, and Jack Chatham. Horror fans might recognize Matt Mittler from Dead Time Stories and Basket Case 2, and he and Francis Raines would both show up in Breeders. The Mutilator's story is simple. If you've seen any slasher movies, you basically know the plot. A group of teenagers head to an isolated condo for a four-day vacation, and one by one get hacked to pieces by a deranged psycho killer. Four days of R&R &R at the beach. I'm in. Suzanne, I'm in. Sounds good to me. I got a bad feeling about this. Mmm. What sets the mutilator apart from the rest, in my opinion, is two things. First, the kills. I'm coming to get you. The killer in this movie is a hunter and a fisherman who dispatches his victims with a variety of fishing instruments, predating by some 12 plus years that other North Carolina fisherman slasher movie, I Know What You Did Last Summer. The kills in The Mutilator are mostly very impressive and inventive, largely due to the gruesome effects work by Mark Showstrom. <laughs> Showstrom would go on to design or create the effects for a number of horror classics, including A Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2 and 3, From Beyond, Evil Dead 2, Phantasm 2, and a personal favorite of mine, Penelope Spheris' serial killer thriller, The Boys Next Door. The second element that separates The Mutilator from other slashers is its goofy and innocent tone. Even though they're all in college, the characters seem almost childlike at times. They look for seashells on the beach, and they play games like hide-and-go-seek. Whoever is it stays in the house, and the rest of us go outside and drink a beer. Then, the person playing it hides himself, and we all come back in and try to find him. When we do, we stand or sit or lie down next to him. Finally, there'll just be one person wandering around the house trying to find everybody else. Sounds like great fun. You'll see. If it weren't for the outright brutal kill scenes, the mutilator would barely warrant a PG rating. Even the one nude scene in the movie is quite playful, sweet, and rather tame. <laughs> The 
As a result, the mutilator is innocent and cheesy one minute, and then suddenly incredibly brutal the next. It never takes itself too seriously, and yet the characters are mostly likable, and the gore is quite good. <laughs> There's one truly shocking kill scene here that I refuse to show in this episode. I just don't want to ruin it. It simply must be seen to be believed. But I will say this. It involves a giant hook called a gaff. What's this thing? Oh, that's a gaff. What's a gaff? When you're fishing, and you see a big one up over the side of the boat, then you hook it in them. The Mutilator initially received an X rating by the MPAA, so Buddy Cooper decided to just release it unrated. And it did play some theaters in New York City and Los Angeles, but many theaters wouldn't touch an unrated print. So eventually, Buddy was forced to make severe cuts in order to secure an R rating and get the film in theaters. No! When The Mutilator played the Harris Theater on 42nd Street, it was paired with another infamous early 80s slasher, Pieces. That sounds about right to me. It would definitely make a great double feature. Kids, be careful out here on the beach tonight. It's not dangerous, is it? Yeah, there's no murders or rapers around, are there? I mean, they've been having some heavy action lately. <laughs> are you kidding? It's like a graveyard around here. The Mutilator was filmed in Atlantic Beach and Moorhead City, North Carolina. I don't know what it is about that state, but it seems that a disproportionate number of my favorite regional cult movies were filmed there. Movies like Preacher Man, The Legend of Hillbilly John, Redneck Miller, Final Exam, and Carnival Magic. Those movies are all amazing and worth seeking out. Be careful. Well, I certainly will. Arrow Video released The Mutilator fully uncut as a two-disc DVD Blu-ray special edition in February of 2016, and that's the version to pick up. Really, look no further. It has two commentary tracks, a feature-length makings of documentary, and a bunch of other special features. Frankly, it's a no-brainer and one of my favorite releases of 2016. <laughs> Finally, I want to give a quick plug to a newer North Carolina horror movie, Dan Reeser's slow-burning Bigfoot flick, Stomping Ground. With an emphasis on character over scares, this won't likely satisfy the gore crowd. But if you're looking for a character-driven indie movie with a likable cast and better-than-average production quality, give Stomping Ground a chance. It's definitely one of the better Bigfoot movies I've seen. And there's even an appearance by The Evil Dead's Teresa Tilly. You can pick up Stomping Ground on DVD or watch it on Amazon Prime Instant Video. Little lady, these woods is dangerous. You don't come out here with a pack of guys you can't trust. How the hell are we lost? It's not Bigfoot. It's not Bigfoot, okay? Hey! Bigfoot isn't real. Thanks again for watching Pop Culture Beasts Halloween Horror Picks. I'm your host, Ryan Stockstead. Be sure to like us on Facebook and subscribe right here on the Pop Culture Beast YouTube channel for new episodes every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday through Halloween. Plus, we've got a special bonus episode in the works. I'm not sure what day that'll go up, but look for that soon. Thanks again for watching. Watch horror movies. I'll see you next time. <laughs>